I'm Dr. Bragadish, consultant cardiologist at Castle Hill Hospital. Today's talk is about an update on myocardial strain using cardiac MRI. This talk is sponsored by Medis Medical Imaging System. I have no conflicts of interest to declare. In routine clinical practice, we use ejection fractions and ventricular volumes to assess left ventricular function. However, these variables are crude and often changes occur late in the disease process. In some patients, ejection fraction can be normal even in the presence of regional myocardial dysfunction. Hence, a method to measure regional myocardial function would be of added clinical value. During cardiac contraction, the myocardial fibers shorten. The extent of fiber shortening can be expressed as a ratio to the initial fiber length. This is called myocardial strain and is often a negative value. It is therefore a measure of regional myocardial function. Broadly, there are three types of strain. They are longitudinal strain, circumferential strain, and radial strain. The myocardial fibers have a complex arrangement within the left ventricular wall. The left ventricle is in the shape of a prolate ellipsoid. The epicardial and the endocardial fibers are arranged obliquely and closer and parallel to the long axis of the left ventricle. However, the mid-myocardial fibers are arranged horizontally in a circumferential manner. So when these fibers contract, that is base to apex shortening of the left ventricle, called the longitudinal strain, and the circumferential mid myocardial fiber shortening is resulting in circumferential strain. In addition, there is thickening of the endocardial wall resulting in the radial strain. Many techniques have been used in MRI to measure myocardial strain. Tanked cardiac MRI was first described by Zeruni in 1989. Essentially, this involves laying out a grid-like pattern in the myocardium and the deformation of these tag patterns can be used to measure myocardial strain. The next technique was similar to measuring blood flow, wherein the myocardial velocities are encoded and read out from the face images. Dense imaging and sync imaging are other techniques. All these techniques involved using additional sequences to acquire images and required special software to measure myocardial strain, which was time consuming to be used in routine clinical practice. The latest in the methodology is feature tracking of MRI scans to measure strain. In this technique, the software essentially identifies a region of interest in the tissue and tracks the motion of the tissue through the subsequent frames. Essentially, you load the three long axis views and the software then tracks regional tissue motion through the frame. From this, you can calculate the velocity of the tissue motion and the extent of displacement of the regions of interest. <clears throat> 
once you have the velocity and the displacement, you can then work out strain and strain rate from the cine sequences. So this technique offers a much more simpler method of measuring myocardial strain compared to the previous techniques. This is a paper by Klaus et al, which essentially sets out what the normal values are for the circumferential strains and the longitudinal strains. The normal values are about 20%. There is a much more wider variation in the radial strain. It primarily depends on the software that were used to analyze and how the epicardium was marked. This is another paper where in patients with preserved ejection fraction and had reduced global longitudinal strain are shown to have worse outcomes than patients with retained longitudinal strain. Over a six year period, there was a 22% increase in mortality associated with a drop in longitudinal strain. Different disease patterns affect strain. The global longitudinal strain, the radial strain and the circumferential strain are differentially affected in different disease process. For example, in patients with hypertrophic cardiomyopathy, the circumferential strain is often preserved while the longitudinal strain is reduced. Similarly, ischemia tends to affect the endocardial layers more Hence, the longitudinal strain is often reduced, whereas the mid-myocardial fibers are relatively spared and circumferential strain is often preserved, except in case of transmural myocardial infarction. In fact, if the circumferential strain is reduced, then it indicates transmurality of myocardial infarction. This is a patient who has concentric left ventricular hypertrophy with a normal ejection fraction. In fact, in this patient, the ejection fraction was 65%. He had presented with heart failure. And once we have analyzed the same data set using feature tracking to measure longitudinal strain, you can see that the global longitudinal strain is reduced at 17%. And the circumferential strain is also significantly affected at 15%. There is epical sparing of the strain, whereas the basal myocardial segments shows reduced strain. In other words, this epical sparing with the reduction in global longitudinal strain is classical of amyloidosis. In fact, this patient was diagnosed with amyloidosis subsequently. In conclusion, myocardial strain with feature tracking cardiac MRI is simple to use in routine clinical practice. It is reproducible and it adds value in routine clinical practice.